Welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson, we will discuss Practical Lab 6.4. So let's read the question together. From exercise 6.1, capture user values through a float array, and once the sentinel value is given by the user, then display all the given values in a tabular format back to the user. The user must be limited to a maximum of 10 marks or less. Okay, great. So, exercise 6.1 was a basic um, sentinel controlled loop. So, it was float, we get input from the user, and then we will have a while loop. And we say if the input is unequal to minus one, the loop will continue. We will print, oops, print out the values or print out just input to the user. And then the user needs to give us an input. Then we can use a scan if and we can go and grab the input from the user remember percentage if ampersand input okay so let's save this and run so let's see what will happen to our program so as you can see there's our program we will start with one two three ninety nine fifty and when we want to stop we enter minus one and then the program ends Okay, so that was exercise 6.1. Now we need to um, solve the question 6.4. Okay, so we have a sentinel loop with a float as an input, but it said the user then needs to display all the given values in a tabular format back to the user. Okay, and then the values needs to be stored in a float array. So I will keep this float input um, variable but I will also go and create a float ARR input okay, array. But what's the size of the array? So the int is the user must be limited to a maximum of 10 marks. So 10 is our maximum amount. So the array won't exceed 10. So we can create an array of size 10. Then what we need to do is when the input is retrieved, it needs to be stored inside the array. So let's do that. So what we will do is we will say array input. And then we need to specify the index, but we will do that now. And then input must be stored there. But how do we know at which index do we need to store each input? Okay, and for that we need to go and create another variable called int count and we're going to initialize count to zero. Okay, so we will then go and store um, the input inside array input index count. And then after we have stored the value inside the array, we need to increment count in order to go to the next index in the array so this count variable is kind of like um, checking where we need to go and store each input and it's like enabling us to then go from 0 1 2 3 4 inside this array okay and that's the basic premise for the solution but it's not complete yet so let's go and check we run this okay and we start off with 1, 2, 3, 34, let's say, 55, 99, minus 1, and there we have it. Now we assume that everything is stored inside the array. What we can do is we can create a display part here, and we can use a for loop. Okay, and for a for loop, we need to go and create a counter variable. Then we need to initialize the counter variable to zero. We say i must be smaller than 10 because our indexes for the array of size 10 goes from zero to nine. 
and we increment and then we print out the array so let's say oops input percentage d okay and then percentage f so the first percentage d will be for input one two three and so forth so we will say i and then we will say array input i so this will enable us to go and display the whole array so let's go and save this and we run this okay so we have entered one two three four or fifty or four fifty five ninety nine and then minus one to stop now you can see it's all displayed here but it's a little bit of a mess so what we can go and do is we can add a new line here and we can also limit the float to two decimals after the comma so let's run this again so one one two two three three four four minus one to stop and there we've got it input Okay, I just want to drag it here. So input, it's one one two two three three four four minus one to stop, and then eleven twenty two thirty three forty four minus one, and then all zeros. So where's the problem now? We don't want to store minus one. Minus one is um, just to stop the input. It's not a value that we want to enter into the array. It's just a stopping value. So now it's stored inside this array. So how do we solve this problem? There's another problem as well. Let me quickly run this. And what will happen here is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12. This is kind of a problem. Okay, and the reason being is, I'll show you just now. Can you see that the array stopped at 1010? 10? We went out of the bounds of the array. And that's not good programming practice. Because we're storing outside of the size of the array. So count went to 11 and to 12. But the array is limited to 10. So we don't do that. So we need to also limit that. Okay, so we don't want to display or in actual fact um, have the minus one stored inside our array input and we also need to limit the input to 10 values so how will we solve this problem okay it's actually quite easy what we will do is this part here the printf and the scanf i will do the first time around outside the wallet and then this part here, I will shift to the end. Okay, so I will get the input from the user. And then I check the input if it's minus one. Because remember, the input doesn't have an initialized value. So it's actually also not good just to start off with input is minus one. Because we don't know what's the value of input. So if first ask the user to give us input we get the input then we check if it's minus one if it's not minus one we continue inside the loop we insert the input inside the array at index zero for the first time we increment to one and then we ask the user again for input okay and then what we can do now is we can add a condition here and we're going to use the and because both of these conditions need to be satisfied to continue with the loop and that condition will be if count is unequal to nine okay so if we get to nine we want to stop okay but let's first do this for nine and see what will happen Okay, so we will run our application again. 
we will say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we displayed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But the ten was not stored. Okay. So what we can do is we can just add the ten, but this brings up a small little glitch that we can solve if we want to. It's not perfect, but we can do that. So if we insert up until 10 and then we add another one, so that would be 11. Okay, the 11th input. So count will be equal to 10. It's one less than the actual number. And then it will stop because it exceeded the amount for count. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 was actually stored. Now let's check if the minus one is saved. Okay. Into the array if we want to stop the input prematurely. Yeah. But we, we solve this by using the printf and the scanf before we go into the while loop. So we get the input, then we check if it's minus one. We store it inside the array, then we get input again. And then we check the input before we insert it into the array. So let's see if that will solve our problem. Okay. Oops. It seems to me that the command prompt stopped working. Let's run it again just to check. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then we say minus one. We stop it prematurely. And now you can see one, two, three, four. And the minus one was not stored. And that's the solution for Practical Lab 6.4. Now there is quite a different, um, there's different solutions to this problem. This is not the only way to solve this problem. I think this is the easier way to solve the problem. You can also do this with an endless while loop and then use break statements inside the while loop to check for minus one or and then also check for if the count is equal to 10. So there's multiple ways um, to solve this problem by using counter controlled ideas using the count, but this is also a sentinel control. So this is kind of like a combination between counter controlled and sentinel control because there's a counter that limits the maximum number of inputs, but we can also stop prematurely. That's more sentinel controlled repetition. And also by using decision structure with the repetition structure, we can in, um, create a program that will solve this problem for us. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.